feelings is not always sexual. I know you know about sexuality because you've been taught to the SS2. There's no kid here. It's not only when one uncle says, come and sit on my leg and starts to be funny. That is not the... There are different ways you could be at least mentally, emotionally, psychologically. Somebody keeps telling you, you will, you will never do well, you will never do this, and they are messing with your mind. That's the worst kind. As adults, you don't have to be my child before I discipline you, before I correct you. And correction is usually done in love. We're not trying to enforce our will, we're trying to give you a sense of right and wrong. You're 16 year old, 17, some of you are 15. You have no business being outside your house after 5 o'clock. At the very least, at 6. Your choices and your actions have consequences. You know about consequences, right? You break the law, they say, if you don't, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Everything you do now will come back to haunt you. Scary, but that should set you on the straight and narrow. As girls, you have choices that you have to make every day. Abuse can be very traumatic. So don't be the abuser. Young men, sometimes you tend to bully younger students. It is abuse. You tell them go and wash toilets or go do something nasty that you don't want to do yourself. It is abuse. The fact that they are younger than you doesn't make them inferior to you. Okay? Everybody is special. So abuse is always out of anger and hostility, but discipline demonstrates love and affection. If I correct you, it's because I love you. If I don't care, I won't say anything. That's why it's abuse. You see somebody going the wrong way, you don't say anything. You don't give up. What happens to that person? Abuse is used to enforce, to make the child listen. You have to listen to me. You have to do as I've told you. You don't give the child the chance to express himself, himself or say how they feel. When I discipline my children, you know, with one hand you can beat or talk to or take away some privileges. And then you call them and say, okay, do you know why I did this? So you're punished, but you're also told why you're punished and why that should not be repeated. That is not. Discipline is not fun. It's not pleasant, even though it's supposed to bring about a good outcome later. Some of you are in that place where you are the child that is treated differently. Your parents have shown that some kids are, are more favored. That's the worst kind of abuse. But again, when you are a strong person and you have faith in God, it doesn't matter what you go through at all. You can be treated differently, always told to do the chores nobody else wants to do. In fact, maybe you need to do all the chores and every other person can do the nice thing. That is abuse. Showing favoritism. None of you should ever need to go through that. So if you don't find it pleasant, don't do it to someone else. We're all growing up to be parents, grandparents. <coughs> Okay, so remember, discipline and abuse are like as different as babies from that. So, uh, abuse teaches a child that decisions are the, whim, are the whim of the caregiver. That means that it is what I feel you should do at the time that you should do, irrespective of how you feel about it. It may not be the right thing, but I just feel you need to do it because I have authority over you before now because I'm older. You know, some people will bully you because they are older. It shouldn't be like that. Okay? But for discipline, it will teach a child to make healthy choices. You don't, nobody imposes anything when it has to be discipline. Remember, the will of the caregiver or the parent or whoever, the authority figure, your teacher, your parent, whoever, they enforce what they want, but you're taught to make your own choices. You're taught to choose properly, right for God. Good company, time to study, there's time for everything. Time to study, time to play, time to rest, time to you know, like that. In abuse, the caregiver has all the power. 
the child is given no respect. Nobody cares how you feel. If I like, I can tell you to go and stand like a statue, like this, for one hour. I don't care how you feel, but you must do it. Because I have some form of power over you people now, because I'm older, because I'm a teacher or a parent. How dare I? We are all privileged because everybody comes at a particular time for what you're sent here to do. You have a mission. You're not a mistake. If anybody has ever told you you're a mistake, tell them to go and check again. Because nobody here is a mistake. Okay? If anybody was born out of wedlock, that was how God designed it. There is no bastard here. Everybody has a parent. Okay? Discipline is based on a balance of power and mutual respect. When I send my kids on an errand, it's my right as a parent to send them. But I tell them, thank you, dear. For, for going, get me water. I tell them, thank you. Why? I'm teaching them to be courteous to others. When they do something wrong to me and I punish them, I make them, I say, come and apologize to mommy. So all this is part of discipline. Training, courtesy, saying I'm sorry, knowing when you're wrong. Okay, the last point now. Abuse involves humiliation. They make you feel less than nothing. Some of you have cried secret tears because of things that have been said to you. Some of you weep once in a while. How do you Nobody sees those tears because of the things you're going through, either in your auntie's house or something somebody said in school, somehow. Okay, so that's all abuse. Discipline does not humiliate the child. It gives you a sense of worth, a sense of value. It increases you as a person. And the very last point, abuse requires submission. But discipline does not require submission. <laughs>